The third ATV was launched from French Guiana last March on top of an Ariane 5. It's named Eduardo Amaldi, after the famous Italian physicist. ATV, which stands for Automated Transfer Vehicle, is the most complex spacecraft that Europe has ever produced. Its mission is primarily to serve as a fully automated unmanned cargo vessel. After more than eight months as an integral part of the International Space Station, ATV-3 is now approaching the end of its working life in orbit. ESA's ATVs are designed to carry propellants, gases, water and equipment to the ISS, as well as removing waste generated by the onboard crew. Since development of the first ATV, which was launched in 2008, prime contractor EADS Astrium has been working relentlessly to refine and build these huge space freighters from its base in Bremen, Germany. You have to imagine that an ATV stays about six months in orbit, and already during the six months you are doing a stepwise evaluation of that flight. And those, the results from this flight evaluation have to be directly implemented in the next unit, which is already integrated on ground. So when we have finished the post-flight evaluation, there is only one month remaining before we ship the next one. Laden with almost seven tons of supplies, ATV-3 tipped the scales at 20 tons and, at the time of its launch, was the world's largest operational spacecraft. After a flawless liftoff, ATV-3 propelled itself autonomously towards the International Space Station under the watchful eye of ESA's ATV control center in Toulouse, France. We spend uh, four to ten days uh, phasing our orbit with the International Space Station. So we adjust the uh, altitude of the ATV to bring it eventually to a point uh, behind and below the ISS ready for the rendezvous attempt. When ATV-3 was in the correct position, it began the automatic docking procedure that would attach it to the Russian Zvezda module. ESA astronaut Andre Kerpers, who was undergoing a six-month stay in orbit, oversaw the process from on board the space station. Having had intensive simulator training, he was ready to take the controls should anything go wrong. We have to react in a short period uh, and have to monitor a lot of different things to see uh, if the ATV is, uh, is approaching in the right way uh, because we have to, of course, protect uh, both the ATV and the station uh, that nothing happens. And then uh, capture, there we are, capture. Once it was safely docked and pressurized, the onboard crew had to clean and test the air inside ATV-3 before unloading procedures could begin. As well as food and clothing, the equipment stored on its eight racks included experiments destined for use in ESA's Columbus Laboratory. Air and oxygen carried by ATV-3 has now been used to regulate the astronauts' living environment. Propellants and drinking water have been transferred to these station's tanks. And the extra 45 cubic meters of living and working space provided by ATV-3 has been a much appreciated luxury for the onboard crew. Using its thrusters and under the control of ISS software, another function of the ATV has been to give regular reboosts to the station, correcting its altitude and velocity, and providing a mechanism for avoiding collisions with space debris. In preparation for its departure from the station, the ATV will soon be filled with waste before closing and testing its hatch and that of the Russian Zvezda module. Following the undocking procedure, it'll orbit the Earth several times, before burning up in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. ESA is contracted to provide a total of five ATVs to the International Space Station project. ATV-4 is already in Kourou and due for launch in spring 2013. By demonstrating expertise in automated docking technologies, the spacecraft will leave a valuable legacy to Europe's spaceflight industry, with plans for related applications already on the horizon.